Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and it makes our day. And to be very frank with you, there are hundreds and hundreds of concepts which goes behind when we are building a neural network. Neural network from scratch, from a vanilla Python perspective, is not the biggest deal that you can really do. But like you know, when you have a TensorFlow, a PyTorch as an abstraction, and now you are just going ahead and now trying to build on something new. That's going to have a lot of impact, and over a course of time, I think uh, knowledge distillation is one of the concepts which has been underlooked, but it's very important in research. Of course, we'll be going deep in this session over a course of time. During the month of March, I've been planning to do a lot of sessions on it, so we'll be coming out with a lot of sessions. So make sure that you learn whatever it is being taught here, and just take this as a prerequisite. Of course, a lot of prerequisite sessions and everything will be happening. But stay tuned for the future sessions, and I hope Madam is always jacked up for the community work, and she's always ready to deliver the talk there. And thank you so much, Ma'am, for being on the show. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Vishwas, uh, and uh, thanks a lot uh, for uh, uh, you know inviting me for the session. Um, yeah, I think uh, let's go for the session. It's fun. Sure, sure, perfect. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, sorry for the background, but I think it should be <laughs> fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, um, let's go to the session. Um, uh, before going to the session, um, I'm Sri Ranjani Ramakrishnan, a Google developer expert in machine learning. And uh, I have also, uh, you know, uh, been in this uh, machine learning uh, community as well as, uh, you know, research uh, for a couple of years. Um, so let us uh, go for the session. So in today's session, um, we are uh, going to um, yeah, we are going to see uh, talk about um, knowledge distillation. Um, I hope my camera is fine because it just got frozen here for me. We we were able to see you. Okay. Okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. Now, now I think it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, let us uh, go to the knowledge distillation topic. So before going to the knowledge distillation, um, let us try to understand uh, where it came from and why it is important. Because I think those questions are very important to answer before. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Hello, sorry for the confusion. Hello. So now your screen is frozen and... Uh, is it better? Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we can't see your shared screen. Yeah, yeah just a minute. Uh, just, uh, there was a uh, technical glitch and I'm really sorry about it. Yeah, it's better? Yeah, okay. yeah it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so... Today we are just going to see uh, the um, you know overview of knowledge distillation. I'm not going to go in deep about all those uh, equations and stuff, but uh, to get an overview of the whole topic, and uh, I also want people to take it as an opportunity to try out knowledge distillation because it's really awesome and you know it has a lot of potential to get extended and being used in a lot of real world applications. Um, so where it all started? Uh, so it all started with the concept of model compression um, so we know that um, with this you know deep learning era where we use deep learning in each and every you know small devices and everything around us um, it's it's good that we have a state of the art uh, accurate models um, which are which are very big because uh, it has its own importance and the um, the need to solve some problems um, so for example if you take t5 uh, which is like 11 billion parameters and gpt3 is like 175 billion and we just increase uh, in those uh, size of the parameters uh, but uh, there is also uh, you know, um, a side effect or, uh, um, you know, there is no free lunch with respect to building these models um, that um, the carbon footprint of such models is like uh, 
quite enormous. And uh, if you compare it with even a US car, including fuel for average one lifetime, you, you can see how much big it is even with a normal transformer model. So what does it tries to tell us is that, uh, you know, this is not it's, it's it's one of the best solutions, but it's not always, uh, you know, the um, a solution uh, which is um, usable in every case. Uh, so what um, we can, uh, uh, okay, I think some issue with the camera, I'll just uh, freeze it and uh, let me uh, try to uh, focus on the slide. Uh, so you, you can also have uh, this uh, resource constrained environment uh, where we move towards edge devices, uh, but there are a lot of resource constraints in terms of memory, latency, power consumption, bandwidth, privacy, etc. Uh, so what actually happens is that um, we need a model um, which is compact, which works in such resource constrained environment, and also it's very efficient, right? Uh, so that is the need. And um, we can see that uh, model compression is a technique where you try to um, reduce uh, over parameterized model to a smaller model. And um, so there are common techniques of the um, um, model compression are pruning, uh, quantization, um, matrix decomposition, knowledge legislation. Uh, by using these techniques, um, our goal is to achieve, uh, you know, um, a smaller memory footprint model, and uh, it leads to faster inference time, which can be deployable and like which is very efficient also, right? So that is kind of the, um, you know, aim what we are looking at. Um, so to just to go a gist of what are these uh, common techniques? Um, so pruning. Uh, uh, you know, they try to reduce um, the uh, architecture of the neural network uh, through, you know, reducing the layers or uh, the neurons and uh, stuff like that. And then quantization, uh, you try to go from um, a higher precision to a low precision model uh, without uh, much loss of uh, significance, uh, performance difference. Um, then matrix decomposition is that uh, you use, uh, you know, linear algebra matrix decomposition techniques uh, to uh, factor the weight matrix of the learned neural network um, into, you know, um, different latent uh, factors and then uh, use that uh, reduced um, factored model for uh, the final, uh, you know, uh, training and inference. So the, I mean, techniques like uh, singular value decomposition can be used uh, for this. Uh, then uh, today we are going to uh, see about knowledge distillation where I will be explaining what knowledge distillation is and why and how it started. So, uh, we, we generally have seen that, uh, you know, uh, compared to a model which you have trained, um, we always have, uh, um, you know, ensemble models giving us better performance, right? So why ensemble models give us better performance uh, is uh, because uh, compared to the learning of one a function, if you try to make a combination of a function, which always gives better performance. Uh, but the issue with the ensemble model is that, um, you know, they cannot be trained, uh, you know, because multiple versions of it has to be trained and then you have to ensemble it and uh, uh, they, they cannot be computationally efficient in every case. Uh, so they are usually expensive based on the model architecture. Um, so um, Busilva and their uh, collaborators, they thought that, uh, okay, let us go for this concept of model compression, where they thought, uh, you know, it is good to transfer the knowledge uh, learned from the ensemble function into a smaller model. And uh, thereby, um, they are able to, uh, they're able to, you know, transfer the knowledge as well as the model is more, the smaller model is um, more efficient, which can be used in real uh, world uh, systems. Um, so, Hinton, uh, he publicized this um, uh, method uh, uh, and it is called uh, distillation and he used soft logic, but that is also a transfer of knowledge. Uh, he inspired from Lucilia and then he tried to use some other method of uh, transfer, but the concept is the same. So what is knowledge distillation? Um, knowledge distillation is a procedure where uh, the knowledge is transferred from uh, the teacher model uh, to the student model without a significant loss of performance. So 
we can see that there are a couple of uh, you know concepts here like one is a teacher model one is a student model okay what is a distillation how do you do the transfer etc which i'll be explaining multiple uh, in multiple slides but what is knowledge distillation the whole procedure where you want to transfer the knowledge uh, which is present in the teacher as a function and that to the uh, student without much significant loss of performance okay so I, I, I just uh, take a pause here so, to see, you know, um, how um, you, you can just get what knowledge distillation is. And uh, now, so how it is done? Uh, so now we know that uh, this is knowledge distillation, but how it is done? So we can take new uh, teacher as well as uh, student uh, models uh, from the same or a different architecture and uh, you need a of course you need a, a loss function to optimize based on right and uh, we know that we want to match the student to almost is equal to the teacher so we need an optimizing function which is going to mimic the teacher and uh, that is done by matching the uh, softening log uh, logics of the teacher model and the general cross entropy uh, labels i'll i'll try to explain um, the uh, concept again but yeah uh, how do you generally uh, soften the logic so you try to soften the logic by temperature um, scaling function and the softmax function uh, so what does it mean so generally you have a neural network um, you try to you know get some feature representation and then you apply a linear classifier layer and then at the end of uh, the layer you are going to get the logits right so after getting the logits uh, you will be applying a softmax function uh, to get into a class probabilities uh, to be you know mapped to different class labels so they are saying that um, the softmax function uh, can be softened um, instead of mapping to a hard label, which is zero or one. And uh, uh, so that the whole function becomes more smoothened, uh, but it yet reveals the difference between the classes. So that is their uh, idea. And they say that uh, by doing this, um, you have uh, some dark knowledge which is present in the teacher function, which gets, uh, you know, which can be utilized uh, to be transferred to the student. So that is the major uh, idea of this vanilla version of the knowledge distillation. So let us, uh, you know, see this. Uh, um, say for example if you're going to combine or ensemble uh, model then what do you do you try to take the different models you combine the class properties and uh, you try to combine using average or sum or uh, you know geometric average or whatever uh, the uh, way of uh, uh, combining the statistics and uh, when you try to do this um, you can see what happens when you do a soft name of it so we know that this is the one hot uh, label encoding for um, excuse me for different classes here and uh, so now i know that uh, the particular example you know it belonged to class uh, dog so you have a one there and uh, this is the output of this uh, geometric ensemble of the probabilities now you say that okay so dog has 0.9 probability and cat has 0.1 these two are like very very minimal um but you can see that it's very peaky uh, like um, because you try to uh, match it to this hard target labels right um, but um, this might still you know uh, not give us the correct information with respect to the knowledge of the function but when you try to soften it that is uh, scale it by a factor of t the raw logics uh, you can see how when uh, how it happens when you try to soften the output of the ensemble right um, you still get the uh, highest uh, uh, class as uh, class probability uh, for dog only but then you have the smoothening of the uh, value so the, dis the the properties gets distributed much better uh, so these softened outputs actually reveal the dark knowledge in the ensemble um, we call it we call it dark because we cannot interpret what is the knowledge but we can see that uh, it is having the uh, uh, teachers uh, efficient no uh, knowledge which is present in the uh, which can be transferred to the student 
Okay, uh, so in terms of equation uh, or the loss functions, what you try to do is that uh, um, you are uh, going to have, so we know the normal uh, softmax function is this, uh, that if this is the uh, raw logics which you will get from a particular class, um, you are just going to get exponential of zi by uh, sum across all the other uh, logics, right? So this is going to be my uh, softmax function. But uh, in this case, because we want to smoothen it out, um, we are going to put a, a scaling a value of T and this is called a temperature uh, parameter. Um, and um, this temperature parameter uh, tries to smoothen out. So for a hard output of zero or one, this is going to be one. Uh, but if you want to soften it, then you want this value to be greater than one. Uh, so what we try to do is we are going to have two different uh, loss functions, um, which is uh, like one, which is going to be for hard uh, labels, and uh, that is the general uh, cross entropy loss functions, um, where you try to get the, you know, hard uh, targets. The other one is uh, going to be the um, soft uh, target functions, which is uh, by using this T value, which is uh, greater than uh, one. So this uh, loss, which is called as a distillation loss, you try to mimic uh, the teacher's uh, targets. And this loss is called as the student loss uh, with, uh, you know, it's a general cross entropy loss with it. And uh, so the total loss of the knowledge distillation is going to be, uh, you know, the weighted uh, sum of uh, this uh, student loss as well as the distillation loss. Uh, generally, you give less weight um, for the student uh, loss uh, compared to the distillation loss because you want the distillation loss to have more importance, but also you don't want to miss out on the student uh, loss information. So that's how it is. Um, now, pictorially, um, you can see that you pass the uh, input and you have a teacher model. So it can be any teacher model, it can be any student model. Um, and uh, you just get uh, the logics here. So generally you get the logics here before applying to the softmax. And uh, so this is the softmax uh, you apply. Uh, so here you can see that uh, at t is equal to one, uh, you are trying to map using uh, the hard label, which is the ground truth label. And this is the loss function. Um, so which you call it as a hard prediction. And then um, when t is equal to t, which is uh, greater than one, uh, you are going to have the uh, soft labels uh, where you try to match or mimic uh, the uh, class uh, predictions of the uh, teacher model. And then uh, you try to making it as a soft labels and then you uh, get the fire distillation loss function. So that is uh, how, uh, you know, the general knowledge distillation uh, works. So we have the student loss and we have the distillation loss whose weighted sum you're going to uh, optimize on for the complete training. So with respect to the procedure, um, we can uh, see that uh, you have a you have to train the teacher model to get the teacher uh, logics, which is the soft labels. And then um, you have to train the uh, student model, uh, you know, to get the student logics, which is the soft predictions. And then um, you find the student loss uh, using the hard label and uh, soft predictions. And distillation loss using soft label, soft predictions, soft label. And then you move on. OK, uh, so before going to the variance, um, uh, I hope uh, I'm just uh, taking a pause here to make you understand this uh, concept of knowledge distillation. So Knowledge distillation uh, generally, um, you know, uh, was introduced with this vanilla version by Hinton. And uh, after that, there was an explosion of, you know, um, uh, works which is uh, based on uh, uh, knowledge distillation itself, um, which is like quite huge, uh, you know, um, 
covering different variety and concepts of knowledge legislation. So here, uh, I want to point out that the major three, uh, you know, um, components of this knowledge legislation is uh, as the two main words, uh, knowledge, and then uh, legislation, and then the architecture of uh, the you know student as well as a teacher. So what is the knowledge here? Uh, we call the uh, um, knowledge which we or the uh, function which we learn from the teacher after the soft max is the knowledge uh, we have and uh, distillation is like how do you distill the knowledge from the teacher to the student so you have multiple uh, strategies for it and then um, you have different types of uh, architectures which you know uh, call it student and uh, how how different architectures can be considered and then the ways of you know uh, considering the uh, knowledge distillation scenario itself right so because here you considered it for model compression, but it's not necessarily that um, the knowledge has to be distilled only for the case of a knowledge, um, sorry, model compression. So let us uh, get some, uh, you know, variants uh, of uh, knowledge distillation. So the first one is uh, like the different types of knowledge. Um, so one is a response-based knowledge. Um, like you can see from this overview diagram that um, you know this whole thing is a teacher model, and uh, you are getting you know output from the response of the teacher. So it's basically from the output layer of the predictions, and uh, which is based on soft targets. So those you want to mimic to the student. So this is called as a response-based um, knowledge, which uh, you want to transfer. So that there are works which is based on that. Then uh, you have feature-based knowledge. So you call feature-based knowledge is that uh, you mimic the feature maps uh, from the uh, intermediate layers. And uh, you try to, uh, basically you say that, okay, uh, you know, only the features are actually discriminating and learning the discriminatory information between classes. So why can't we take the intermediate layers and the feature maps and then you try to distill that to the student. So uh, so here uh, we will just apply the transformation function uh, where you have the feature maps, which is not in same shape. Uh, as a student, then you try to apply some transformation function. Otherwise, uh, you just directly take the intermediate layer feature map and try to use the distillation loss to uh, go towards the uh, student. So that is the feature-based uh, uh, function. Uh, so for matching the different feature maps, uh, you can use any similarity-based uh, functions uh, like KL uh, divergence or um, L2. I mean, like it could it could be anything. Uh, then um, you have uh, relation-based knowledge. So what does it mean by relation-based knowledge? So I just want to find the relation between the input, uh, you know, hidden learned layers as well as the output. Um, so what you try to do is that um, why not, uh, you know, get the relations instead of directly the feature uh, maps or data samples. So that is uh, based on, uh, you know, try to learn uh, or uh, model the correlation between the teacher and the student feature maps or any other correlation based functions kind of thing. So that to capture the relations. So that is called as the relation based uh, knowledge systems. So this is the variations you see uh, in terms of different types of uh, knowledge. Let us go uh, to the next uh, for uh, distillation. Uh, so the distillation strategy, uh, like you actually uh, train the distillation uh, using uh, different types of distillation. So one is offline distillation. Uh, the other is online distillation. The other is self-distillation. So in offline distillation, you generally have a big 
you know, pre-trained teacher uh, model from which you want to distill the knowledge uh, to the student. And uh, it usually happens offline as the name indicate. Uh, so here you can have a teacher which is like very big and then try to, uh, you know, put the student. Uh, in online installation, uh, you want the teacher and the student to learn, uh, mean to be updated as an end-to-end architecture. And um, always we might not have a pre-trained model available in every scenario. So going for online distillation has its own advantages. Um, then you have self distillation uh, so it's a special case of you know online distillation you just say that uh, okay why can't I have the teacher as well as the student the same model and uh, you try to distill itself uh, within its sub networks uh, so that is uh, the uh, self distillation part um, where you try to you know optimize the distillation loss within its own sub networks right? So these are the different, uh, you know, um, ways of distilling the knowledge which is available in the um, literature, I mean, currently. The other uh, thought process is that um, model capacity gap, uh, which is between the teacher and the student architecture, uh, is very important. So if I say that only if my teacher is going to be very efficient or, you know, well, uh, yeah, it, it, it's like, you know, be trained to its capacity, then we say that a student uh, can, you know, uh, be also uh, be made as close as possible to the uh, teacher so we we want uh, the uh, capacity of the uh, student uh, and teacher to match so it uh, the gap between the uh, model capacity uh, can be reduced using efficient uh, architectures so uh, so you can have different student architectures like a shallower version of the teacher like you know you try to remove uh, some layers or neurons from the teacher and then make it as a, a student or you can have a quantized version of a teacher um, like you have uh, a teacher which is 32 bit precision uh, and then you uh, try to reduce it as an 8 bit for a student kind, kind of thing and then you have the same model as a teacher and then see how you can distill it um, so it's not necessary that the student has to be always smaller or shallower than the teacher uh, but it can have uh, you know almost uh, equal parameters as the um, teacher but the like what you want to distill and what is the knowledge and how you want to do this. So those, you know, try to uh, vary for different types of knowledge distillation setups. Uh, so, I mean, this is one example where uh, apart from model compression, um, which we are, uh, you know, um, seeing till now. Um, so you also have uh, the teacher which is trained on a clean data. Um, so you like why can't I have a clean data and then uh, go for a student to train on the noisy data and uh, you know get get it to be learned like like the teacher so so that is more a difficult task for a student but uh, but that's also you know a knowledge distillation so it's not necessarily in the setup of uh, you know model compression right so uh, that is uh, that is what um, we see so here in this particular case uh, your student as well as the teacher are uh, going to be in the same architecture like almost at the same capacity as this because the task is going to be different here so yeah so that is the about the different architectures Now, the next is different scenarios, uh, like uh, what are the different scenarios of uh, having uh, knowledge distillation set up. So one is uh, going to be multiple teachers. 
so when i say multiple teachers like uh, why should i learn only from a single teacher so i can have multiple teachers uh, from which you can just uh, learn from so uh, what you try to do in that case is that uh, you try to get the information from multiple teacher you try to ensemble them or you also take their intermediate layer information um, together put it together and try to get the final decision loss uh, so people have also uh, done on having a teacher assistant kind of thing set up also uh, then uh, something called cross modal uh, so mm, this is mostly towards having um, multiple uh, cross modality uh, set up say like uh, this teacher is uh, trained on a, a single modality but a student is trained on a completely different modality and you should have a pairwise matching of the you know information between the uh, data but uh, otherwise if it's not then how do you try to distill from one modality to, to other so that is the uh, concepts for cross modality uh, data free distillation uh, works so in data free distillation works they try to you know have issue of security or privacy uh, because you don't have access to the uh, teachers data um, model cut data so what you try to do is uh, you try to get the uh, you know feature parameters and then try to reconstruct uh, the data of uh, you know the teacher and use that model uh, to you know compare and uh, get it from uh, you know compare with the student to get the distillation so that is kind of set up and adversarial uses adversarial losses uh, like having a discriminator generator and see whether you, you can discriminate between the student and the teacher and get the logits or the feature map so that's one way but there are also other ways in the adversarial uh, distillation setup um so graph base is mostly try to model the vertex as some self-supervised uh, teacher and then try to get the information from it uh attention base you try to map the attentions of multiple you know of the uh, teacher and the student model and then based on the optimization using that function so quantized is mostly like uh, from a higher quantized version for the teacher um, uh, go back to a lower quantized version as student model and then uh, try to do distillation so basically these are some um, you know clusters of uh, grouping of the works of uh, knowledge distillation but there of course there are so many other uh, works which uh, of course I have not uh, covered uh, um, in this uh, talk but um, we can see how and where the knowledge distillation uh, you know has uh, um, grown exponentially because uh, we saw that from a normal uh, you know vanilla setup of having a distillation um, people have uh, tried multiple uh, different uh, you know cases based on knowledge uh, architecture and then uh, based on the distillation setups and also other kind of scenarios uh, where the knowledge distillation can be used so i mean you can also try uh, from your uh, you know um, problem settings what you are working on see if knowledge distillation or the concepts can be applied there and maybe you can also come up with a multiple uh, you know um, um, concepts for uh, knowledge distillation in any of the scenarios or a new one so that is uh, all about the uh, uh, concepts or the theories or uh, you know for the knowledge distillation which i had today um, so let us go to a collab uh, notebook and see how the uh, you know model can be uh, trained uh, on So let me uh, uh, st uh, stop uh, sharing and then let me uh, share the uh, uh, collab notebook. Yes, ma'am. I think uh, they will take care of the share screen right now. Ian, yeah. Yeah, one minute. I'll just uh, share the screen. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Can you uh, see the uh, notebook? Great, ma'am. Yes, we can see the notebook. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have uh, uh, mentioned uh, PyTorch, but uh, let us see an example in TensorFlow first, and then see. Uh, so so this is like you know the notebook written by Kenneth Bob, and he just wrote in Keras also the implementation. Uh, so I thought that it will be easy for you all to you know go and uh, check also. So um, yeah, so what we try to do is generally uh, you know uh, first you uh, import uh, the necessary libraries. Uh, so you have the TensorFlow, Keras, and uh, NumPy, etc. Um, basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like you're going to have you know multiple steps like you first train the teacher model and then uh, you're going to have a student model uh, to train and um, you just get the student loss uh, function um, and then you have a distillation loss function then you have the weighting value uh, between the student as well as the distillation loss and uh, you have the optimizer uh, what is the metrics to uh, evaluate the performance right so these are the steps we are just going to uh, follow here um, so so let's uh, you know construct first the distillation distiller uh, uh, class itself uh, so you are uh, you know um, define the distiller based on the keras model and uh, you are just going to have the teacher as well as a student model um, so here uh, he tries to compile all the uh, you know needed uh, um, parameters like uh, optimizer, uh, what are the metrics you want to evaluate, the student loss function. So you pass on all the values. And uh, what we do in the train step uh, is that uh, you just uh, get the data, uh, unpack the image. I mean, here he has given an image on uh, MNIST. So you can just uh, get the image and the label. Um, so basically, you first pass, uh, do a forward passing of the teacher. Uh, and uh, we don't want the teacher to be trained here uh, because you're going to take from pretend. So then you just take uh, the training as false here. Um, and you, what you will get at the end of the day is uh, the uh, you know predictions from the teacher, right? Um, then you are going to get the student. Uh, okay. Uh, Um, is it okay? I think uh, it's big enough. Um, so, so yeah. Um, so what we try to do is that um, let us first uh, define the whole class as a Disler class, uh, where you are going to pass the uh, teacher and the student uh, models, and uh, you're going to compile all the uh, you know parameters like optimizer, what is the metric which you're going to uh, measure the performance on, uh, what is the student loss function, distillation loss function, uh, what are the weighting values and the temperature. Okay. Uh, so here, um, after getting that, you're going to define the train step. Uh, so here we use MNIST uh, information. So MNIST uh, contains, uh, you know, multiple uh, images with uh, the digits. So here you're going to have uh, uh, X and Y, which is the image as well as the label. And uh, you're going to predict. So first step is uh, you you want to just pass on the data to the teacher model, but then you don't want it to be trained. So you just put training as false. Uh, you get the teacher predictions. And we know that uh, we want the student predictions. Um, so you just uh, pass forward pass the student, but then you want the training 
to true. Uh, so you get the student predictions. Um, basically, uh, after getting the student predictions, we want uh, the student loss to evaluate on the hard labels and the student predictions. So that is a student loss, as I explained earlier. Um, and um, here uh, is this uh, distillation loss, uh, which is uh, based on uh, the uh, teacher predictions, like you apply softmax with teacher predictions with, uh, excuse me, uh, softened by the temperature value. Uh, similarly for the student also now uh, once you get the distillation loss my uh, total loss is going to be uh, you know alpha uh, times student loss plus one minus alpha times distillation loss so this is the total loss which i'm going to optimize on so here uh, you know you're going to train uh, basically every step and you are applying the gradients and get the values and stuff. So these uh, steps are basically going to update the weights. Uh, and uh, this is uh, going to see what, like you have to update the metrics in whichever way he has compiled. So you are just updating the state. Um, and finally get the student as well as the distillation loss. Um, so this is going to be the uh, train step. Now in test step, um, what we want is we just want to follow pass, calculate the loss, right? So uh, you just uh, give the student and you don't want the training to happen. So you just get the Y prediction and uh, then you are going to uh, have, uh, you know, you're going to compare with the uh, hard labels and the Y predictions. Uh, so that is going to be my uh, final loss, right? So so this is going to be uh, the, uh, uh, you update the metrics based on that. So that that's about the uh, test step. So creating, uh, so that this, this whole thing is about the distillation uh, class. Uh, now, uh, the teacher and the student can be any model. So here in this case, uh, you know, uh, he has uh, put the teacher as, um, uh, you know, uh, a, um, a model with uh, convolution, um, ReLU, max pooling, convolution, like flattened and dense. So this is going to be the teacher model, and um, which is the 256, right? So here uh, it is going to be 16. So that's the uh, you know um, a shallower or a smaller um, model of uh, this. And here also you can just see it's a 32. So so this is uh, uh, you know going to this is going to be a bigger uh, teacher model model and this will be a smaller uh, student model but of course you can have any architecture here uh, so you can even have a, a pre-trained uh, model uh, for uh, the uh, teacher and uh, you can have uh, you know any other model uh, which you are defining as a student or like uh, both pre-trained models with a reduced uh, version etc anything can be uh, based so it's model agnostic uh, uh, of this distillation setup uh, so yeah now um, so when when you try to uh, you okay uh, I'll just explain later. So now what you try to do is that, um, yes, as I mentioned earlier, so you're going to have the MS data set. Um, I think TensorFlow has this, uh, or Kiras has this uh, data sets directly where you can just uh, get it uh, you know, loaded. So you're going to get the MNIST and uh, directly load uh, the uh, data set. So when you try to load it, um, you're going to get, uh, you know, the train values and test values directly. Um, and then uh, you want to normalize, of course. Uh, so you try to normalize and reshape uh, the data. Um, and uh, once you've done it, uh, what you will be so so MNIST is going to be like um, um, you know the lower version of the data with le less channels um, it can be easily trained uh, here so that example he has taken uh, now um, you have uh, like basically what you do is the first step is that uh, after defining the model structure um, you are uh, going to um, you know train the teacher in a usual manner so you try to give the loss optimizer and the metrics so basically here he has given adam um which tries to adaptively change the learning rate and you can give sgd or any other uh, you know optimizer uh, technique and uh, loss is going to be sparse categorical uh, so uh, why because uh, you want it to be uh, um, 
the cross entropy loss with the uh, heart and then uh, you have the metrics which is the accuracy based on that right so that is going to be your uh, teacher model so you're going to fit it and uh, you're going to evaluate uh, e evaluate the uh, model so you can see uh, how the teacher model is performing right uh, so it's already uh, you know 97.59 accuracy uh now uh, this is like just training the teacher within this um now what we try to do is that uh, we want to uh, distill uh, the teacher to the student um so so this knowledge has to be passed on to the student and for that we are going to use the uh, distiller class which we have defined already so where we are going to pass the student as well as the teacher and uh, here also uh, you're going to compile using the Adam and uh, the metrics as uh, sparse categorical uh, with the uh, cross entropy. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is a, a so student loss function is also the same uh, sparse categorical. Uh, and um, for distillation loss, we want to compare uh, two uh, you know functions, right? So, uh, for, so for that, you're just going to give it as a, a KL divergence. Uh, so be a, yeah, so that uh, we have to give for that. And then um, alpha, which is the weight uh, value, uh, they have given it as 0 0.1. But uh, yeah, according as I said, that distillation loss has to be uh, more weighted, more compared to um, the uh, student loss. So accordingly, you can give the set of the alpha and temperature they have given 10. Uh, after uh, passing on the distillation and the student, um, you are going to fit uh, the class uh, model um, by the same thing. And then uh, you can evaluate the model on the test uh, data. Um, so we can uh, see here, um, you know, already 97, right? So here it's also 97.59, which is approximately, you know, similar thing, um, which you're going to get by distillation, right? Um, with much reduced uh, model uh, parameters. Uh, and um, you can also train students from scratch, right? So usually uh, when you want to compare, um, you want to um, you know compare the uh, trained uh, student model cup performance, uh, trained, uh, uh, sorry, um, teacher model cup performance, and then a distilled uh, teacher has to, uh, distilled student has to uh, perform as equal to the teacher. And uh, you want to know uh, how was the raw uh, student performance. So that is this, uh, you want to train this, uh, student from scratch uh, it's the same setup um, you are just giving the uh, trained student and uh, here uh, again you can see it is 97.85 but so in this example uh, you don't you know find much difference with respect to the um, performances but uh, actually uh, you know the the reduction um, of uh, the number of parameters in the models with respect to the performance is quite huge seen in multiple different uh, scenarios but uh, so you know uh, this whole uh, notebook is just a very uh, basic version of the knowledge distillation um, you can uh, see that uh, you can try with different seed values and try with different uh, um, you know architectures and stuff to you know get get the uh, Bristol student uh, to be as close as uh, to the uh, teacher right so so that that's what we have to see and most of the cases uh, you know a teacher will be much higher uh, compared to the student trained from scratch uh, but in this case it's a smaller uh, data set example so it is coming around everything is around 97 98 but then uh, usually the you know teacher will be like around 70 70 and all and this will be like around um, no uh, so this will be around 90s this will be around 80s to 70s so that that how the difference will be there and the district student should will almost match the uh, teacher so yeah this is uh, one uh, such uh, you know notebook uh, with uh, which is explained with uh, tens of you um just a minute sure. yeah, I can. if you want you can share I, it in the sorry we can share the notebook as well like yeah we can yeah okay uh yeah i'll share i mean this is the link is available i'll just uh, anyway share the uh link of the uh notebook for uh, sure, sure. reference yeah okay uh yeah so that's all i have uh, with respect to the uh, uh, 
concept. Knowledge but, destination. Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that that's all I have uh, today with respect to the uh, concept. So these are my references. Um, if people interested can you know study this main paper, uh, model compression, and these are some of the sure you can share concept. that in the private chat. We will put it in the public yeah. chat. Sure. Yeah. So that's it uh, from me today. Um, so. Yeah. And also like, ma'am, like I just wanted to know, like, how are these abstraction affecting, like in terms of we are talking in terms of secure ML, we are also talking in terms of fairness in the ML today. So how is it being architected today? And also how is knowledge distillation helping us understand all this? Uh, so knowledge distillation uh, help us, uh, as I mentioned that in one of the scenarios, right, like uh, you have the concept of uh, uh, data free distillation, right, so where you're just going to have um, uh, you know, you, you don't have the availability of data uh, uh, from the teacher or the, uh, you know, model parameters. So how are you going to, you know, utilize the learned uh, latent representation in between to use and distill knowledge from? So basically, you try to match the feature layers directly between the uh, learned uh, teacher and the student. So in that way, you have the privacy being preserved. You don't have uh, the actual, you know, information. Everything is going to be put in the latent representation space, right? So there then also you're going to distill the knowledge so that is one thing mm -hmm. there are the other that's what uh, that's one way uh, to answer like your question on how uh, the setting is being done uh, mostly i think uh, now data free yeah. uh, distillation is uh, one of the hot topic of how it's been done yeah sure sure i think that's perfect that's perfect and thank you so much ma'am for taking the session it means a lot to us and of course like a lot of people you know it was so in detail like you know many people were saying it was so good she's explaining in a lot of detail and we are like okay fine if you guys are enjoying that's actually more than enough for us so thank you so much ma thank you thanks a lot uh yeah thanks a lot for providing me the opportunity and uh you can always uh you know connect uh with me uh in my social uh media links and uh yeah uh, happy learning yeah well thank you so much thank i you. think we can end the broadcast